I thought I would start off for the people in the back that this voice is not coming from someone at the floor. I'm just short. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that uh, while we were meeting Brad and I and we were talking, he says, I can't wait to hear what you're going to say because you've been at this for six, seven years. I said, Brad, when I started, I had a hair, head of hair like you. <laughs> and now look. <laughs> but anyway, so... I think I have to start off by situating a little bit about our company and where we're located. Uh, we uh, live, our company is located in Sonyville, Nova Scotia. If you don't know where that is, that's okay. We're uh, on the, facing the Bay of Fundy between Digby and Yarmouth. And um, so that at least tells you where we are located. But it's a rural situation. That was the key I wanted you to, to pick up. I work for Camo Seafoods Limited. It was started in 1946. Our founder, Ben Camo, is uh, still alive, 94. He'll be 95 next month. Um, not quite as active uh, these days, but uh, was extremely active. He, I think he helped, if anybody has uh, shares in the sticky note uh, situation, he helped uh, pu put the uh, volume of sticky notes because he would get all the billing and he would say, who bought that, why did we buy that, and uh, up to just about a year ago. <laughs> In 2013, we have over 500 employees. We are still mainly a fish processing uh, company. We process uh, ground fish such as uh, haddock, cod, and pollock. We also have, uh, we also catch and process herring. Uh, we uh, process and catch uh, scallops. We have a smoking operation, a salting department. We have a fish meal operation, marinating operation. We have four welding operations. Uh, vehicle repair, uh, two stock rooms, we have six fleet vessels over 130 foot, and we have a marine, marine slip where we, where we repair and inspect our own vessels and outside vessels. We have an added value department and a lab. So you can imagine with all these different facilities and different factions that we can have incidents, lifting, grinding, uh, uh, welding flashes, wet floors, repetitive jobs, confined spaces, and even paper cuts in our offices. So uh, in 2006 and 2007, we received the visit of uh, the then President Nancy McCready and uh, Vice President uh, Stuart McLean. They were there to deliver a message to us and to our executives who were all in the boardroom. And they said, there is a time, you have a time, it is time for you to change. Your numbers are getting higher, basically due to uh, accidents and claims, and you are going to be placed and you're going to be taxed with surcharges. And besides that, you're going, your name is going to be put into the Herald. I'll tell you, it was not a good time for us. Initially, immediately, immediately, our management took a decision, a commitment. We're going to change. We also appointed one individual to lead this change. Not long after that, we received another visit from WCB, and Stuart McLean was leading this part. And uh, basically, they wanted to know what was going to happen. Well, we said, we have a person that's in charge. You probably might have figured it out, it was me. And um, so we, they said, uh, they asked, how are you going to do it? I said, Stuart, we've got a problem. This is a major problem. We need help. And he replied, we're going to help you. And uh, I said, are you sure? <laughs> yes, we're going to help you. I said, great, we shook hands, and that was the start of a good relationship so far. He then provided Tommy Harper, and uh, Tommy Harper for us uh, was a godsend, and uh, so when we met, and we met often, like Brad was saying, oh, so many times, we had no roadmap, we had no plan. And uh, so we decided, what are we going to do? Uh, so we said, well, we got to start s s 
uh, sending the seeds of safety throughout our operation. Uh, you know, we got to start. Okay. We have all these processing plants, vessels, marine slip. I said, Tommy, we're going to take our time. We live in a rural area. We have people that have worked for us for a long time, 25, 30, 40 years is not uh, unknown. So we decided to start with our main plant, our main office, main plant. We have eight departments. There's enough going on there. So we decided to go with that. And once we have this safety secured, we'll branch out to other ones. Good idea. We didn't have a safety coordinator, so we went through three. The first one knew everything to do about safety. He was going to tell us, but his attitude and his aggressiveness did not fit with the people that we had as employers. Um, he was overly aggressive, taking photos and, and nearly threatening, and so he found uh, another employment in another province, and uh, that, was, that was great. <laughs> then we hired, we found a second one. Good guy. But this guy wanted to be a friend with everybody. Well, you can't implement something and be friendly all the time. But he had a great asset. He could gather information, keep tabs of who had taken which course. So it was great. So he was going to be on a team not as a safety coordinator. We finally find, found a third one, Andre, and uh, great attitude, calm. He's in refrigeration, he's a manager, but he's calm, so he can approach people, convince people, and uh, so it worked out. So we had our safety coordinator. At that point, WCB appointed a team. There was going to be a team of workers from WCB that would join our team. This was just, again, to smooth out all the activities that were going back and forth, which was great. We like to have the aspect of a family, so we had to make sure that all these activities with them and us were working. We had to have a lot of visits, so we made another commitment that we were going to be visible. Tommy Harper, safety coordinator, one team from the WCB, our team, and me. So as we were going around in our main plant, a lot of times, it started working slowly. The, the thing that took time is that we, we had to be so often repetitive. Everybody takes it. And uh, I, I, uh, I missed out one little point here. I have to backtrack. Because we didn't have a plan, we had issues. We had to be flexible, consistency with our message, persistent, and patient. The reason flexibility, why? We have a lot of seasonal operations. So we have people that come to work in April, March, and work till October, November. So then they go off, we don't see them again. The next year we have to do it all over again. Wear your safety glasses, put your bump pad, Make sure, look, there's a puddle, etc. So we had to start again, year after year after year. So it's, it's a constant battle, as a lot of you know. So I apologize, I had to backtrack there. Maybe it fit in quite well. Um, the more that we were being visible by the teams going through our, our departments, the more that safety was being accepted and pronounced and uh, seen. So that was going quite well, but I, I would think the major point out of all of our success is when WCB started having case management reviews at head office. A lot of our incidents were by fishermen, which were landing in Yarmouth and Pubnico and elsewhere. So now these guys had to come to Sonyville. This was like going to the principal in the old days. I mean, this is not good. And they might be seen by who knows, I don't know. <laughs> so, but this was a turning point. It gave us an opportunity, again, from the WCB, who was going to do the reviews uh, prior to and afterwards with us, our team, how things were showing and how were things going. So everybody knew a little bit without going in real a lot of details. But this was a major turning point. 
while we, uh, when we got the, um, the visibility and uh, we started having these case reviews, we decided at that point that our main plant was quite safety uh, prepared. You know, we, w this is going over many years. I mean, this, I'm going through it quite quickly. You're talking and you have to listen, but it's a constant battle, consistency, persistence, same message, always there, always there, always there. We had, at that point, decided we were going to visit our other main plant and then branch off to the other plants and then to our vessels and to our marine slip. But at that point, we knew because what we were getting back from feedback from our employees, there was a safety culture. So we had gone from a change of safety, which we really didn't have, I guess, to a safety culture. It means that everybody was embracing, everybody was talking about it, and it wasn't that bad to talk about safety. So that was really great. And uh, another major, major point that we did, we created a safety charter. A safety charter was a means to get all our managers, supervisors, everyone from the president on down to sign yearly a commitment that they were going to embrace their small area of safety. So they were going to take care of that small little body. When it all started, this is a good thing about being French, you have a lot, you use your hands. So you start from the top. It was a commitment from management and from all the rest, and we were going to do everything. With the safety charter, it meant that basically the safety, culture, et cetera, was coming from the bottom on to the top. So it was, it was extremely work. It worked very, very well. And um, basically, we were shifting the baton. Because you can't always have the message from Noel Debre or the coordinator or whoever else. It has to be from the managers who are much closer to that body of workers. This spring, we, we received a, uh, an award from uh, Workman's Comp. So they were going to come and visit us. And uh, normally, when we receive awards in the past in our company, we, it's, in a, it's in the boardroom, and the executives are there, and it's all very good, and everybody, great, great, pat your back. And uh, we decided at this point, we were going to have it with our workers. So we garnered as many that we could. We were over 120 that came for lunch. We had a good lunch, a lapi pie, and uh, it's, it's a very local dish. <laughs> and a good, good meal, because all these, a lot of these workers are outside, and it's cold, and uh, it was early April. We had a nice sunny day, but it was cool. So they were all there. Our executives were all there, and uh, Stuart McLean and his executives were all there. So. I, before we started speaking, I said to uh, Stuart, I said, Stuart, we've got a different model. We've changed our model at Camos. So I lifted, I had practiced this, I lifted my finger and they all yelled out, safety. I went like that and they all yelled out, productivity. And the third one, profits. So I said, this is for you because now it means that it's starting to change. And uh, the journey continues. Just before I terminate, or I terminate till I finish, <laughs> I'm not gonna disappear. <laughs> not a first date. No, no. <laughs> we're, we're really not that strict at the timekeeping. <laughs> well, you never know. You were showing me little papers earlier, two minutes, three minutes, and stop. <laughs> This is a point I have to say thank you to all the Camo personnel and to, if it wouldn't have been for them, we would not have reached this safety culture. The second one I would like to thank is uh, Stuart McLean, my friend, for his commitment to us and the respect. Ben. Another one, I have two to, two to go, was to his staff that he appointed to us. We have so many more friends in WCB, we wouldn't have been able to accomplish that without the staff 
uh, of WCB. And lastly is uh, Tommy Harper, a real good friend who is a good safety partner to me. Thank you very much.